Hello, I'm Pastor Rick, and welcome to our podcast. I hope that the message that you're about to hear will bless and encourage you today. Good morning again, church. Good morning online. Uh, I'm Pastor Rick. If you didn't know who I was, most of you do, but there are sometimes people that tune in and say, who is that guy? I'm Pastor Rick. My wife Sherry was up here just a moment ago uh, giving the announcements, and of course, Pastor Evan, and we are delighted that you have joined us. We're going to go to God's Word this morning, and so um, there is a note sheet that is available to those of you here in the building. I hope you picked it up. The other thing about the note sheets, and one of the reasons we make these available, is on the back are prayer requests. Many of the requests that we've prayed for, as well as other extended church family requests, are printed here. This gives you an opportunity on a weekly basis to take these home, and when you think about praying for the needs of our church, they're, are, they're, they're printed on the back of the note sheets on a weekly basis. This morning, I'm going to spend a few minutes talking to you about the ways of Jesus when we don't understand his ways, it's easy to misunderstand some of the things that take place in our lives. Jesus loves each one of us more than any of us can imagine. He died for you. He died for me. He died for your sins. That's how much he loves you. He paid the just price for sin. Should have been the price we would pay, death, but Jesus paid it. And if that's all Jesus wanted was to bring us to a relationship with him, to save us. If that is all Jesus wanted of our lives, then from the moment that we got saved, he should take us. We should be gone. If you are a follower here this morning, if all he wanted was for you to spend heaven with him, you shouldn't be here. But we're all here. So there's got to be more that he wants for each and every one of us. And that's what I want to talk to you about, because he leaves us on earth. He has a purpose for each of us. There's a world to reach for the kingdom. There are others he wants to save. And for God's will to be accomplished, for God to use us to accomplish great things for his kingdom, then God needs to work in our lives. So I'm going to get to the first point really quick this morning. I'm going to make a confession to you. I'm going to make a confession to you about many of the problems and difficulties in my life. Not all of them, but many of them. And as you listen to my confession, it may help you to better understand the problems in your life. Here we go. Number one, here's my confession. I prayed for my problems. I prayed for my problems. Can you believe it? I prayed for my problems, not in the sense of being a masochist that God just pour the problems on me. I got big shoulders. No, that's not what I mean at all. But I did pray for many of my problems. You see, I don't go looking for problems, but sometimes in the music that we sing, I pray some of the lyrics Listen to some of the lyrics that I have prayed over the years. Break my heart for what breaks yours. Everything I am for your kingdom cause. Another song. Show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. Another song that I have prayed. I give myself away. I give myself away so you can use me. And God has heard my prayers. God has heard me pray as I sang, I give myself away. God has heard me pray, break my heart for what breaks yours. Everything I am for your kingdom cause, and I prayed for my problems. Here's the second part of point one in your notes. I prayed for my problems every time I prayed to be of use or of greater use in the kingdom. Because when we pray, break my heart for what breaks yours. When we pray, use me, God takes us seriously. And then he prepares us to be used. Because most of us, myself included, are not ready to be used immediately in the ways, the full ways that God has 
Ten years ago, this coming, well, actually, it's been 11 and a half years ago, Sherry and I began to feel the Holy Spirit moving in our hearts, and so we started praying, God, we sense that you're going to move us from the community that we're currently living, and you want us to do ministry elsewhere. So, God, where do you want? Get us ready. Prepare us. And for 18 months, we prayed, Lord, where's the next place? For 18 months, we prayed until finally circumstances and God's will all came together. And eight, or excuse me, 10 years ago, we ended up in Columbus, Indiana, because we prayed, God, use us. God, use us in a greater way. God, use us in a new way. And when I arrived here, I ended up praying for the problems that I received. Problems like housing. When we moved into the community, the housing market was so tight, maybe similar to what it is today, although the prices weren't as high, the housing market was tight. And so we looked to rent, we did some other things, and finally, in less than 48 hours, we had to not only find a house, we had to sign papers on a house. 48 hours, I prayed for my problems because we prayed, Sherry and I prayed, God, use us. And then came all of the, the worry of, is this all going to go through? And is the family that's renting the house going to be out in time? What condition are they going to leave it? And then came the paperwork back and forth and back and forth. I'm living in, in, in Kansas. The house is here in Indiana. The bank we're financing from is, I think, in Minnesota. It's all mixed up. I spent more time at a fax machine that I care to imagine, faxing document after document after document multiple times. I don't know where the first ones went. But see, I prayed for my problems. And then when we got here, Sherry didn't have a job. She went looking for a job. She was a skilled Spanish teacher, 15 at least years of experience that she had before we got here, and there were no positions. She couldn't hardly find anything. Schools weren't interested when she got here. She subbed a little bit, did some other things. It took her nine months, excuse me, six months before she found her first full-time teaching position. When I arrived, one month after the election that took place here at the church, one month after, there was no longer an associate pastor here. When I interviewed, when you elected me, there was an associate pastor here. Someone who left the impression with me that when I arrive a month later, they will be here. But just as soon as you guys elected me, they uh, gave their uh, resignation, and they were gone two weeks later, not a month later, two weeks later. So when I arrived, there's no associate. There's no one to minister to youth. One of the first Sundays that I was here, um, there used to be a, a, young, a, a teen Sunday school class. I taught it until we were able to bring an associate on. I prayed for my problems. I could list challenge after challenge of moving to Indiana for a new place of ministry, but I had prayed to be used for Jesus and his kingdom, and he allowed that to happen, and along with it came problems. See, I prayed for my problems, and so do you, every time that we pray to be of use or of greater use by God. And there's nothing wrong with those problems. Number two this morning is this. You prayed for some of your problems too. You prayed for some of your problems too. Because many of you have a heart to be used by God. And God is working on you, bringing things your way, getting you ready to be used. Even if you most recently opened your heart to Jesus. If you are a recent person to be saved or born again or to become a follower of Jesus, all terms for the same thing. If you prayed for that and you received the gift of the forgiveness of your sins and eternal life, you prayed for some of your problems. Here's a statement I just want you to see this morning. Jesus loves you just the way you are. You need to understand Jesus loves you just the way you are. If you're not a follower of Jesus this morning, Jesus loves you just the way you are. But Jesus loves you too much to leave you the way you are. Do you understand that? Can you say amen to that? Jesus loves you too much to leave you the way you are. When you opened your heart to him, when you prayed for him to come into your life, you prayed for some of your problems. 
Because Jesus loves you too much to leave you the way you are. He loved me too much to leave me with my temper. Oh, I thought I had it under control. <laughs> two, uh, two years after following the Lord Jesus Christ, I thought I had my temper under control until I was meeting with a small group one day and one of the, uh, one of the members said, boy, Rick, you've got a temper. And I thought, a temper? A temper? You haven't seen my temper. See, because there had been some work done, but see, he never saw the old Rick, but he still saw the Rick who had a temper, which meant that God needed to work more in my heart. God needed to transform more of my life. Jesus loves you just the way you are, but Jesus loves you too much to leave you the way you are. Listen to 1 Thessalonians. If you doubt whether or not that's the case, look at what 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 3 says. It is God's will that you should be sanctified. It is God's will. Listen. You want to just be the way you are? Then you are missing out on God's will because it's God's will that you be sanctified. Sanctified means to be set apart. That's all it means. But when you are set apart in this new life in Jesus, it means that you're going to be different. You're not going to be like the unredeemed world around you. If you want Jesus Christ in your life, then you have opened the door for him to be what's called the Lord or the boss of your life. And the boss gets to tell you what's important. The boss gets to tell you where you need to change. The boss gets to tell you when they are not happy. But if you have an open heart, the boss will then help you to be transformed. Because it's God's will that you should be sanctified, set apart. Point three this morning, don't fight God's answer. Don't fight God's answer because God's answer also looks like problems and change. God's answer all, often looks like problems and change. You may call it a problem. Jesus said that's an answer to prayer. That's the answer to your prayer to be used in the kingdom. I'm answering your prayer to be a better spouse to be a better parent, to be a more loving person. And you say, well, how does the problems I'm having on the job make me a better parent? How does that person that irritates me wrongly make me a better spouse or a better worker? God uses all kinds of different ways because he sees what you need. Early in my Christian walk, not when I was a pastor, this is early in my Christian walk, I had some hurts come my way, hurts that came from other believers, hurts that came some in a church setting, some outside of a church setting. I had some hurts that came my way that settled deep within. But I had prayed to be all that God wanted. I did not realize that I was a type of person who stuffed all of my anger who stuffed all of my hurt, who was not a forgiving individual. And so God began to bring things up. He began to irritate these hurts. He began to irritate the offenses. He began to irritate the things in my life that I didn't want to be, I didn't like, until I was finally able to come to say, Lord, what is going on? And through the help of some loving individuals that were loving me in my early days of my Christian walk, I began to see that I was a resentful, bitter, unforgiving individual. And I needed to begin to let go of those things. And it wasn't easy. But you see, I wanted to be used by God. I wanted to be of greater use to God, which meant that I gave God in one sense, I gave him permission to go down and start meddling with my life. So there's people say when I'm preaching, oh, you're just meddling, preacher. Well, in one sense, I am, but I hope it's the Holy Spirit that's doing the meddling because who knows? <laughs> what I am saying could be the answer to your prayer. It could be hitting you right between the eyes, and it could be the answer to your prayer, God, use me. Number four this morning is this. When you pray for God to use you, you give him permission to stretch you, mold you, 
and even to cause you pain. When you pray for God to use you, you give him permission to stretch you, mold you, and even cause you pain. Now, not a pain that comes from punishment, a pain that comes from training, coaching, and discipline. When you want to be used at the highest level in the kingdom, then you have given God permission to meddle with your life, to stretch you, so that your capacity is greater, to mold you so that you can be used in very special ways and at times to cause you pain. Many of you are probably aware of, if you played any kind of sports, that when you signed up for sports, when you signed up for sports, you gave the coach permission to stretch you, mold you, and cause you pain. If you signed up to play sports and your coach didn't cause you discomfort or pain, he's probably not a very good coach or you weren't a very good athlete. Because the best are stretched and molded. And God will take you at your prayer. And he will mold you, he will stretch you, And he will cause you pain, not to hurt you. He's not trying to punish you. He's trying to root out those things that would keep you from being able to be used fully in the kingdom. Well, after you see that, when you pray for God to use you, You give him permission to stretch you, mold you, or even cause you pain. I was just thinking about how some people might respond to this. And here's the response. I think there may be some of you that have. Well, then I don't want to be used by God. I don't want to be used by God. I don't want him to stretch me and mold me and cause me pain. I don't want to be used by God. Hey, I want to go to heaven. But let's get rid of this pain stuff and this molding stuff and this stretching stuff. I'm sorry, folks. For the few of you that feel that way, I need you to ask yourself, do you really, do you really want to serve God? Because what I have found is that, honestly, true true children of God, true children of God, want to be used by God. They don't want any unnecessary pain, but they want to make a difference. I believe that deep inside of every child of God is a desire to be used by God to make a difference in the world. They want to see lives touched. They want to see people ministered to through them. But that means that you have to give God permission to work in our lives so that we can be used. Here's two quotes, one that I had and one that Tony gave me this week. Most people want progress as long as they do not have to change very much to get it. Richard Kreinbaugh. Most people want progress as long as they don't have to change very much to get it. But this other one by Coach Bobby Knight I think is really powerful. Most people have the will to win. Few have the will to prepare to win. You understand what he's saying there? Most of us want to do things for God. How many of us have the will to prepare to be used by God? How many of us have the will to allow God to work in our our lives in that stretching, molding process, causing us pain, rooting out things? Do you have that will? Because you need more than the will to win. You need the will to prepare to win. You might say, I want to experience the thrill of being used. I just don't want to experience what it takes to be of use to Jesus and his kingdom. But I'll tell you, those used powerfully by God were willing to change and be molded by God. And if you no longer feel the desire to be used by God, then please pray that God reignites that desire. Let me just talk to you. There have been times in my life where I've worked hard, I've ministered hard, I've been bruised and beat up, by life, by the devil, even by other believers. And there are times I'm thinking, you know what? I'm going to heaven. I, I just don't want to do this anymore. 
But something deeper inside of me wants to be powerfully used by God. And so I put myself back in the place where I'm willing to be molded by God. I'm going to take you back to a prayer that I have been praying myself. I've asked you to pray. It's one that I wrote when we were doing the New Wine series. It should be coming up on the screen. This is a prayer. I Actually, it's part of my home screen on my computer so that I can see it on a daily basis multiple times. This is what I've been praying. Lord, I humbly submit myself to you. Do whatever is needed to my heart and my life to make me soft, flexible, fresh, and not rigid that I may be able to receive new wine. And because I prayed that prayer, I've been feeling God working on my life. I've been feeling him pointing out some things, some areas of, of some pride that had lodged deep in my heart. Lord, I humbly submit myself to you. Do whatever is needed to my heart and my life to make me soft, flexible, fresh, and not rigid that I may be able to receive new wine. I hope that you're praying this prayer because God wants to pour out new wine, but he needs to find vessels that he can work with, even cause some discomfort and pain. If you pray this prayer and you mean it, expect God to be working. When you pray a prayer like this, as I have, you begin to pray for your problems. But these are great problems. These are the problems that lead to greater use in the kingdom. I did pray for my problems, and I am glad I prayed for my problems. I am glad that Sherry and I prayed, and God brought us here to Columbus, even though it meant buying a house within 48 hours, for Sherry not finding a job for six months, for all the other things that came along with it, for the difficulties in the early days of the church, finding an associate and covering this and covering that and working with things. I thank God that we had other staff members who were here and who helped carry the load, but it wasn't an easy transition. I would have loved to have stayed in Kansas. Things were easy. But I sensed the Spirit say, it is time for a change. And so I prayed, God, God, a new opportunity, a different opportunity. Bring it my way. And God says, you got it, boy. Here's where it is. And I'm so glad that we did. I'm a different person as God has worked in my life. But I'm not just praying for myself. I'm also praying for the church. The second half of that is this. Lord, I humbly submit this church to you. Do whatever is needed to make us soft, flexible, fresh, and not rigid that we may be able to receive new wine. There's a possibility, folks. Excuse me a second. Look at me. I'm going to say it as nicely as I can. There's a possibility I prayed for some of your problems. As a body. Because I want this church. I believe God wants this church. I know God wants this church. To be able to receive new wine. So that means as a body, do whatever is needed to make us soft, flexible, fresh, and not rigid that we may be able to receive new wine. I hope that this is your prayer also. Now you're thinking about this and you're going, oh, <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I'm not sure I can handle this. I've got enough in my life right now got enough stress in my life. I've got enough things going in my life. I can't be imagining God to be doing more in my life, to be doing greater. I want us to go to one passage of Scripture this morning, and I saved the verse until the last. This is Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 through 30. Preached on these verses a few weeks ago. They're on the screen. You don't have to look them up unless you would like to. Let me read this to you and then talk to you about those of you that are stressed to the max. I'm talking about greater things. I'm talking about greater use in the kingdom. I'm talking about being used by God in new ways, and you're going, I am stretched to the max. Look what Jesus says. Come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. 
Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you, because I am humble and gentle at heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Now listen to what he says. For my yoke is easy to bear, and the burden I give you is light. Jesus said that when we are right where we need to be, and that includes allowing him to use us, to mold us, to stretch us, even to cause us pain, if we are right there, his yoke is easy, and the burden he gives is light because he's helping us carry it. Many of us are in a place. Okay. I will talk more about this in coming weeks as to how we can figure out how to get out of this place. But many of us are in a place where we are doing far more than God wants us to do. We are doing much of it in our own strength, and that's why we're weary. Jesus said, come to me in your weariness. Come to me in doing too much. Come to me in the problems that you have. Come to me in your bad job situation. Come to me in your relationship upheaval. Come to me in your financial situations that are not going the way that you are, that are causing you stress. Come to me with everything that is causing you to be weary. All those burdens that you are carrying, come to me and he will give you rest. You're to take his yoke and you need to learn from him. He says, take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you. God wants to teach you. Jesus wants to teach you. He says, I'm humble and gentle at heart. You're going to find rest for your souls. If you have not yet found rest for your souls, if your soul is not at rest, if your soul is tearing apart, if your soul is full of stress and burden, then you need to come back to Jesus and you need to let him teach you what's going on. For his yoke is easy to bear and the burden he gives is light. The, 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 the greater that God has for us, we haven't even really talked much about the greater. We've just talked about our current set of problems that came about because we have prayed. We're going to talk about the greater in the upcoming weeks. As the team makes their way back to the platform, I want, you to, I want you to do this. Embrace God's loving work in your life. Embrace it. Embrace his loving work in your life. That's what I have done. I prayed for my problems. Therefore, I embrace the discipline, the pain, and the discomfort that the molding of my life requires and I will continue to pray this way even if it brings me more problems because I want to grow to be everything God wants me to be. I hope that is your desire also. For God to move in revival in an area, God needs people who are willing to make him first. For God to move in revival in an area, God is looking for people who are willing to allow him to work in our lives. Jesus said, seek first the kingdom and his righteousness and everything we need will be added. Burdened and weary people this morning, come to him. Come to him and then come to him tomorrow and come to him on Tuesday and come to him on Wednesday because what's going to happen as we learn from him as he teaches us, it's going to require us to alter some of our lives. It's going to require us to lay some things down and pick some things up. It's going to require of us that we allow him to work. <laughs> you prayed for your problems. The moment that you prayed, God used me. And they're good problems. They really are. There are other problems that you have that didn't come from him. They came from the way you led your life or are living your life. I've had enough of those. And as Jesus tries to work on my life, and that becomes the time that I have to lay some things down. Entitled this message, Stretched, Getting Ready for the Greater Things, God desires to do greater things. I haven't even talked about the greater things yet. I just felt this morning when I was praying that I needed to end things here. I have about four or five more points to this message, some of which are already in your notes, some were for the second part that you don't have yet, but it's okay. 
This is as far as we need to go. Recognizing God is using you and God desires to use you more. Therefore, embrace the work he's doing in your life. Humble yourself before him. Allow him to speak to you. And then come to you with your weariness and your burdens. There are some of you so burdened today, you've been carrying something for weeks and months and even years. Some of you have had setbacks in certain areas of your life. It might be a physical setback. It might be a financial setback, a relational setback. Maybe you've been estranged from a child or from a parent. Maybe you're having problems on the job. Maybe coronavirus has impacted you in a significant way. Come to Jesus, all who are weary and heavy, burdened. He's going to give you rest. But that means you're going to take his yoke upon you. You're going to let him teach you. He's humble. He's gentle of heart. He's not going to break you. And you will find rest for your souls. For his yoke is easy, and the burden he gives is able to be carried its light. Jesus never gives a burden that overwhelms you. In the growing process, it may feel overwhelming, but he's there. He's going to walk with you through it. So as the Holy Spirit is moving in these moments right now, the team is going to sing. I just, I'm going to pray over you, and I want you, when you stand, if you don't want to sing, don't sing. I just want you to listen to what the Holy Spirit saying to you today. He may speak to you through the words of the song. He may speak to you in another way. But come to him, all you who are weary and heavy laden. Let him give you rest. If you want to come to the altars to pray, do so. You want to stay at your seat and pray, do so. Would you stand as the team leads us? After I pray, they're going to sing, and then I will come back to close the service. Lord, Holy Spirit, speak to us, use us, minister to us. Lord Jesus, here we are. We want to be vessels that you can use. Lord, we want to be people who honestly have sung and pray, I give myself away that you can use me, Lord as we sing this song, as we spend time in your presence, minister, touch, and talk to us individually. In Jesus' name.
God, I came here with nothing, but all you have given me, Jesus, bring me wine out of me. Jesus, bring me wine out of me, because where there is no back to the early part of that song, Mallory. I think it's a little bridge portion there. It says that we trust him. It's after the first verse before the chorus. Just two lines in it. There it is. There's another prayer. So I yield to you but listen to what it says. So I yield to you and to your careful hand. Your careful hand. He's careful with you. Trust him. He's careful with you. I trust you. I don't need to understand. Do you trust him? He's got a careful, gentle hand. But sometimes in his gentleness, if you are refusing, going back to that point three, don't fight God's answer. Some of you are fighting God's answer and it's what's causing some of the strain in your life. When you submit to his answer, when you trust him even when you don't understand, when you yield to his careful hand, you're going to find him working in a wonderful way. But when you fight his answer, then he's going to have to put more pressure because he loves you too much. Remember. Jesus loves you just the way you are, but he loves you too much to leave you the way you are. And so he wants to mold you. Can we sing this line again? I don't know if you can get to it from this place in the song. So I yield to you and to your careful hand. When I trust you, I don't need Again, to let's just keep it right here. So I yield to you. Start yielding, church. So I yield to you and to you. When I trust you, I don't need to understand. Make it your prayer. So, so I, I yield to, to you and, and to you your careful hand. When, when I, I trust, trust you, I, I don't need. To yes, understand. let's go on. So, so I yield to you. Make me your vessel. you really want him, if you really want him, 
to make you his vessel, to make you an offering, to make you whatever he wants you to be, then you're going to pray for your problems. Therefore, as I have embraced the discipline, embraced the pain, embraced the discomfort that the molding of your life will require, and continue to pray this, even if it brings more problems, because all of us want to be everything God wants us to be. Let's sing that again as a prayer. So make me a vessel. So make me your vessel. Make me an offering. Make me whatever you want me to be. God, I came here with nothing. For all you have given me, Jesus, bring new wine. For where there's new wine, for where there is new wine, there is new power. share an illustration with you all just been on my mind throughout the week I didn't build it in the message but I feel the Holy Spirit would want me to share it I'm going to move the pulpit back here just a little bit so I can illustrate it better I want everybody in the building to pay attention and if you're still with us at home please pay attention to this sometimes when we're moving forward with God we're moving forward but it's like we're going around the same mountain because all of a sudden we find ourselves back here again. We're moving forward and it sounds like we're, we're moving forward and we're making progress, but then it's like we're back in the same place we were before. We're back in the, the same thing. We're mad at, they're different people, but it's being mad at the same thing. We're not moving forward in a relationship. We've been in relationship after relationship. We get into a relationship and we think we're starting to move forward. Then the relationship turns, seems to turn sour and we come back around the mountain. Let me tell you something. If you're coming back to this place, God has been talking to you about this place possibly for years or decades and you can't get any farther until you break through here. And I don't know what that looks like for a lot of you. Remember I told you about the bitterness, the resentment, the anger, the unforgiveness in my own heart. Before I found Christ, I kept getting hurt and I kept stuffing it and I kept losing relationships and friendships and it impacted my job and it impacted my family. This was before I was married. Probably has impacted it afterwards. And I thought I got it together, you know, and then I got saved. And all right, I'm moving forward with Jesus. And I'm moving forward with Jesus. And I found myself back to the place where my heart was filled with still bitterness and unforgiveness. And I just thought, well, God forgive me for that and some other things. And I had some people pray for me. And I thought we had freedom. But I went around the mountain and somebody else hurt me. Somebody else caused me pain. Somebody else said something and I stuffed it and I got angry and I didn't fully release it and deal with it and I was right back here around and around and around the mountain. If you have been going around the mountain and most of the time it takes years. See, this is what happens to most of us. We think we're moving fine but three years later it's like we're back where we were. 
We think we get things together, and three years after that, we're back where we were. It's because God is trying to deal with a key core issue, and you can't move on until you move through this, until it is broken in your life. I don't know what that is. I'm asking the Holy Spirit, if there's anybody here or anybody at home, that this is where your life has been. It's the reason that you are still in the same place spiritually. You are still in the same place relationally. You are still in the same place uh, occupationally because you keep getting stuck here and God's been talking to you about that. Today, I'd like to pray that this will be the day of your victory. Jesus, I've had this illustration on my heart. I don't know who it's speaking to. Who's watching right now? Through a lens of a camera and through the, the wonder of electronics that they're hearing and they see that their life has been stuck for years upon years upon years. They keep going around the same mountain. Lord, now I pray that as they have seen this, that you show them what is necessary for it to finally be broken, that they can have freedom that they can have freedom, that their life can move forward and they can be used in greater ways. Oh Lord, may this be a day of deliverance for someone, either at home or right here in the building, because this is the day where they choose to say no more. I am not going around that mountain again. No matter what it costs me, no matter what it takes, I'm not going around that mountain again. If that's you this morning, I don't know who I'm speaking to. I'm not going to have you come to the altars or pray it out loud, but I want you to pray it in your mind and in your heart. I'm not going around that mountain again. Lord, help me. I'm not going around that mountain again. I declare today is my day of deliverance and freedom. No more am I going around that mountain again. I'm moving to the new. I'm moving to the new. I'm moving to the new. In Jesus' name. Thanks for joining us for this message from Columbus First Assembly. If this message has blessed you in any way, would you share it on your social media feeds so that others can be blessed also? If you would like to join us for an in-person service and you're close to us, we are in Columbus, Indiana, then uh, our services start at 10 o'clock on Sunday mornings and our church is located on the corner of 10th and Iowa. Once again, thanks for joining us. Look forward to having you join us again soon.